Greetings fellow Fox mains, I'm Pipsqueak and I might have just found what is potentially the optimal way to edgeguard Marth. Let me run you through it. It turns out, Fox actually has a very very good edgeguard flow shot on Marth. As long as Marth can't double jump to ledge, this will beat everything he can do with fairly lenient execution and reaction times. And even if he double jumps to ledge, you are not putting yourself at risk. Start by T the cancelling a full light shield or said shield if you prefer. Both work equally well mechanically, but a said shield lets you wave dash with the same trigger you shield with, which is a nice quality of life improvement in the setup. You can set up a T the cancel by walking at the ledge, doing a shallow wave dash, or running, not dashing, into it and letting go of the stick before you run off. To easily set up a said shield, I recommend just going into run and letting go right before you reach the edge. You will slide all the way into the tether, but be inactionable during the slide, letting you buffer the said shield reliably and conveniently. Setting it up from a wave dash is more annoying than it looks, because the tether animation removes all the end lag from the wave dash, so you have to be very quick with the said input. Once in tether, angle said shield into the shield drop notch slash diagonal down notch facing out from the stage. Any move Morph makes on your shield when it's angled this way will send you back into the stage. If Morph side beats your shield, you just keep holding the shield and input a wave dash with a trigger you're not shielding with. The reason for not wave dashing with the same trigger is because you don't want the extra difficulty of setting up the max light shield again after the wave dash. The angle doesn't let you go off stage and just resets your tether again. In the unlikely event that Marv Saibis your shield twice, you just reset it twice to match. If you angle the shield slightly further up the octagon gate, every move Marv does will now send you off the edge. So what Fox can do is react to what height Marv is at and slightly change how he angles his shield to switch between staying on stage or falling off stage. As soon as Marv can no longer make it on stage with his up B, you angle the stick up a little and you will fall off the edge and can shine his up B from there. Even perfect sweet spot, though there are slightly different timings if he wall ride sweet spots or if he snaps from max distance. You can easily know in advance which he'll go for based on the spacing though. If said shine sends outwards, he immediately dies. If the shine sends inwards, he can upbeat to ledge and onto stage. To beat this, what you want to do is immediately turn around in the shine and then jump fast fall to the edge. Then you want to regular get up and punish him landing on stage with whatever you want. If he goes on stage, you always have time to punish him. If he went for the edge, your regular get up will always hold it for long enough to kill him. He can't go above the stage and fall to ledge because the shine forces him to hug the wall too closely. Now, aside from side B, Marv can also fall on your shield with a fair, nair or shield breaker. And at first I thought that was the solution. Marv just does these and he wins. Shield breaker makes the shield so small that you can no longer force the up B to connect with it so you can't guarantee the shine and any aerial makes you have to wave dash in both a very small time frame but also with an angle that doesn't automatically keep you on stage and frequently caused me to slide off by mistake. But it turns out I was wrong. If Marth doesn't have a jump and hits us with one of his aerials, he only has one timing he can use to up B to ledge and if we do an immediate full jump fast full shine we will hit his up B every time. If he had a jump and was close enough to hit your shield before using it, he could, to my knowledge, have jumped and grabbed ledge anyways, so it's not really relevant for the flow shot. If he used the jump to swat at you, this will still work. Versus fair and nair, you can also just do the wave dash tether cancel like you would to beat side B, but because I had such difficulty staying on stage and angling the shield to fall off in time, I concluded that doing the full jump shine is much more consistent versus shield breaker and any aerial. Now, the key to this flow shot is only having to wiggle your shield a small bit in reaction to his height, 
and having easy reactions if he side B's for Ariel's the shield. I could not find a single mix-up that I felt was unreactable, but it still remains to be seen how true that ends up being. If he up B's high so he can fall to ledge, you can also catch him with either shine out of shield, drop shield full jump slash short hop shine, or wave dash forward shine on reaction. The only hard part is selecting the right option, but even if you choose wrong, you aren't putting yourself at any real risk. Assuming again that he couldn't just do double jump to ledge, then he has to air dodge in a position where up smash and shine will always connect with him. Depending on how far he goes in, you might have to be prepared for him to SDI down and in on your shine, to hit the ground before he goes off stage to get his jump back. Because of this, I would personally lean towards up smashing almost every time, because an up smash will, as far as I know, always reset the situation. If you react well and stay on stage and shine out a shield is higher up ease and only go off versus sweet spots or close to sweet spot height, he has to do 2 plus SDIs to go high enough to land on stage if he gets shined into the stage, which is unreliable and basically a pipe dream since the shine will naturally come out with variable timings. Nothing in this edge guard flow chart requires difficult execution either. So getting this consistent should not be very hard at all, and even if you miss, the risk is much smaller compared to what might happen to Fox with the currently commonly used edge guards against Marth. If you miss the shine, you can always jump an air dodge, side B back to stage, jump to a platform, jump and grab ledge, or jump and fire Fox. It's much much harder for Marth to force a reverse edge guard. Be aware though that there is one single step where you can be reverse edge guarded. So you have to be pretty quick with your shine turn around jump fast fall to ledge, because if you're slow, Marv can clip you with his immediate upbeat to stage. This is the only scenario where Fox gets put in a dangerous position when he does this edge guard. From testing it, it seems pretty lenient though, so you should rarely ever be slow enough to get clipped, and if you drift away and snap to the ledge from a slight distance, you can never be clipped. So my hypothesis is that you should be able to react to Marv's height and spacing, and adjust accordingly. Without the teether cancel after Marv's side B, and how small the movement to switch between staying on stage and going off is, this wouldn't work, which is why I assume no one has found this earlier. I firmly believe that this is going to be the best way to edge guard Marv in the future, especially at high percents where him landing on stage instantly kills him instead of just resetting the situation. But I only spent around 10 hours labbing this, so there might very well be a fatal flaw I'm not aware of. So I want everyone to test this to find out if it is indeed as good as I think it is. So thank you for watching, and if this works, I want to take credit for making the matchup even again. Consider subscribing, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next video. Bye!